Today, I want to talk about an ancient Vedantic meditation technique. For most of us, whenever we sit down to meditate, thoughts come rushing into our head. We all have regular lives to lead, unlike renunciates who can move away from the material world and dedicate themselves to contemplating on the nature of reality. The rest of us do have these thoughts that are a result of the daily grind that we go through. These thoughts could be people, relationships, events, material objects and so on. So obviously, we do have thoughts that come crowding into our mind. Many meditation techniques talk about focusing on the breath and focusing on emptying our mind, but this is quite hard to do. The Upanishadic technique is slightly different. The Upanishads are ancient texts and often outline certain techniques that help us progress towards realizing the true nature of the self. Sometimes these are not well understood. But before I go into these Upanishadic narratives, lest people get bored, I will outline the meditation technique itself. Then we can go into how the Upanishad actually details this philosophy out in its narratives. Remember that the basic tenets of Dharmic faith are that we are all part of the Supreme Absolute and these teachings are reinforced by sayings like Aham Brahmasmi, I am the Brahman and Tattva Masi, Thou art that. The Upanishadic theory is this. Externalization of these objects is the reason for them to clutter our mind. If we perceive of something as external to us, then the senses are drawn outwards. We desire the object, we want the object, and even on possessing the object, we are seized with the fear of losing it. The actual meditation technique is an all-absorbing technique which is described in the Chandogya Upanishad. When you close your eyes, do not obstruct the thoughts that come to you. Most often, the thought will be about something that we are dealing with in our day-to-day -day life. It could be a person, a relationship, an object, an event, anything that comes to your mind. Now visualize that these objects are within you. You can visualize your body or a silhouette of your body expanding and absorbing the objects within you. If world events bother you, you expand yourself to visualize the world as a tiny speck within you. This visualization of yourself, the self, is expanding. The earth is inside you, the solar system and finally the universe is inside you. You are infinite and you are now the cosmic self, the Vaishvanara, the infinite consciousness. Now the thoughts that are pertinent to the world will not bother you anymore because after all, they are a mere speck within your body. Once you reach a state where you are contemplating the fact that you are one with the Absolute by reinforcing the statements such as that thou art, tattva masi, it would be easy to dismiss these thoughts away. This is the Vedantic technique in a nutshell. If you continue to do this, in my experience, you will find it easier to go into deeper meditative states. Because when there is nothing left to visualize, when everything is within you, you will find that thoughts don't bother you that much anymore. You will find that you can empty your mind quicker. If something is a part of you, it ceases to draw the senses outside. So stay in the state and contemplate on the Mahavakyas like Tattva Masi, that thou art, and Aham Brahmasmi, I am the Brahman. Now, we come to the actual narratives in the Chandogya Upanishad that talk about the Vaishvanara, the universal self, and Samvarga Vidya, the all-absorbent meditation technique. The first one, which talks about Samvarga Vidya, is in Chapter 4, of the Chandogya Upanishad, which contains a narrative of King Janasruti and Raikwa, the cart puller. King Janasruti was a very dharmic and righteous king, and one day, as he was relaxing in his palace, he sees a couple of swans flying overhead. They were conversing with each other, and one swan mentioned to the other 
not to fly over the king janashruti lest they be burnt by the bright halo of light emanating from janashruti this is an obvious reference to his spiritual realization now king janashruti is then surprised by the reply of the other swan the other swan dismissively turns and says who is this king janashruti you talk as though he is as great as raikwa the cart puller now the king is unsettled who is this raikwa a cart puller who was according to the swans greater than him the king became restless and he wanted to find raikwa he sent his guards to search for him and after a long and difficult search these guards come across a shabbily dressed man sitting beside a cart when they inquire he replies that he indeed was raikwa the cart puller the guards ask raikwa to come with them to the palace but raikwa shoes them away saying if the king wants to see me let him come to me on hearing this the king rushes to visit raikwa he goes to him with cattle gold and all sorts of wealth raikwa immediately dismisses the king telling him that his knowledge is not for sale the king persists and keeps visiting raikwa trying to convince him finally he offers up all the material wealth that he has on seeing the king's persistence raikwa relents and teaches him the samvarga vidya the all absorbent meditation technique now the upanishad is not direct in detailing this technique this chapter the chapter 4 gives a few analogies such as how for a regular person air seems to be an all absorbing place where the sun and the moon and the waters merge into and similarly this concept of a samvarga vidya should be on the universal self on which everything can be absorbed into the next chapter chapter 5 gives us more insight into this concept of vaishvanara the universal self and the right technique of sadhana meditation this is also not very well understood the narrative starts with five learned men prachinashala satya yagna indradyumna jana and budila they are assembled together to discuss who is the self the atman and what is the brahman the supreme absolute infinite consciousness what is the difference between them they go to sage uddalaka aruni to get more insight uddalaka knowing why they had come to see him tells them that he would take them to king ashwapati who has knowledge of the vaishvanara the universal self the supreme absolute now all these learned men accompanied by sage Uddalaka they go to the king the king offers them charitable contributions which they decline mentioning that they were there to gain knowledge the king takes a day to reply the next day he calls all of them and begins questioning them on their meditation techniques their sadhana he asks prachinashala what is the self that you meditate on there is a deeper meaning to the king's question identifying one self as part of the supreme absolute and contemplating on the unity of all being is the central aspect to most vedantic dharmic meditation techniques so the king asks this question prachinashala responds saying that he meditates on the heaven as vaishvanara the king gently admonishes him saying that this is just the head of the universal self heaven is just the head of the universal self and he says that this meditation technique is not useful to realize the true nature of the universal self now what the king is trying to say here is that if you focus on the external if you focus on anything external as the aspect of the self it is just part of the self and not all encompassing so you don't realize the true nature of the self the king next asks satya yagna and he replies that he meditates on the sun again the king tells him that this is just the eye of the universal self and not the universal self itself the king then asks indradyumna 
and he replies that he meditates on air as the supreme self. Again, the king tells him, air is just the vital force of the universal self. The king asks Jana, and he replies that he meditates on the space as supreme self. The king tells him that this is just the torso of the universal self and not the entire supreme absolute itself. The king asks Budila and he replies that he meditates on water as the supreme self. Unsurprisingly, the king admonishes him and says that this is just the pelvic region, the bladder of the universal self. Finally, the king asks Uddhalaka, the sage, and he replies that he meditates on the earth as the supreme self. The king tells him that the earth is just the support of the universal self and not the universal self itself. Now, you can see the philosophy behind this narrative and you can see the point that the king is trying to make here. His words are not to be taken literally. He's saying that by meditating on an external object or something that we perceive as distinct, we are only meditating on a part of the Supreme Absolute. We still perceive distinctions. Objects that are outside of us draw the senses outwards. These objects control us because of the perceived externalization of it. A desire to possess the object transforms into a fear of losing it once the object is possessed. Samvarga Vidya reiterates that nothing is external. Everything is a part of the infinite consciousness, the Supreme Absolute. So one technique of Samvarga Vidya is to identify oneself with the all-encompassing Supreme Self. So external objects are all visualized as within the cosmic self, which is indeed the one meditating on itself. The king summarizes this and states, Those of you who are here meditate on the Vaishvanara self only in part. He who worships the self as all-pervasive and infinite enjoys eating through whoever eats in the worlds, through all beings and through all selves. And again, eating should not be taken literally. Eating is experiencing. Similarly, Raikwa identifies himself as a universal self absorbing all the objects that drag the senses externally inwards into the self. The Upanishad states that for such realized individuals, they get included in their virtue the results of virtuous deeds performed by any person. Now, this meditation has to start in the form of a Nididhyasana. In a nutshell, once the narratives of the Upanishads are heard and understood, one has to reflect on these eternal truths, the Mahavakyas, and then the meditation combined with the knowledge gleaned from the scriptures that we are part of the Supreme Absolute should be undertaken as a step towards progression. I've explained what I think is the Samvarga Vidya technique of meditation, the all-absorbent technique. If any of you listening to this try it out, please do let me know. As always, the known is a drop and the unknown an ocean. Peace.